All right, so I got some pretty good news yesterday. You know, my MRI results came back, if you saw that video. Uh, you know that, you know, my stress fracture, and that is what I have, um, was on the compression side. So that means that I do not have to have surgery. So that was really good. And, you know, I was given the okay to continue to train on my stationary bike. Uh, you know, the only caveat was don't do anything dumb, right? You know, don't, don't stress your hip. Don't go out and start trying to run until I get the okay from him. Uh, and I think the, uh, the test for him is going to be, you know, pain free. So I'm, I'm assuming he's going to start me out uh, pretty slowly to test the waters and maybe even to do that through, you know, you know, physical under the guidance of physical therapy. But we'll see. I got a follow up appointment with him in four weeks. And I believe that, that they want to take x-rays this time as opposed to, you know, another MRI. Um, and of course, I'm leaving it to the experts to do what they think is right in order to be able to get me back on track here. So that's kind of where, where I'm at with that. Uh, but because I can, you know, continue to work out on my uh, stationary bike, I'm going to finish this training block out. And I'm so glad that I can because I, I really did want to finish what I started. And here we went through, you know, 15 weeks. And then I had to pause it for uh, two days. Uh, I actually missed the one workout, which was an easy workout, and then the the long endurance workout. I didn't follow it exactly as as Garmin had described. I did go out on my mountain bike, but it was an easy ride, and I, I didn't get my heart rate up to that marathon level pace for uh, the amount of time that they were uh, prescribing. But you know, I was still out on my mountain bike for you know the period of time. I just didn't give it the intensity, and that's because I was a little bit freaked out. You know, I didn't want to have my hip snap or something because I just really didn't know what was going on. And so just for my own mental health and, and just being comfortable with myself, um, you know, I didn't want to didn't want to push my luck. So and I'm glad I did that. You know, as it turned out, I didn't have to. I would have been fine to, to do what I've been doing. And so I'm going to continue on. I'm going to finish this training block out. We are in a taper week. So the next few workouts are going to be pretty light and compared to what we've been doing. And that's typical. And that's okay, you know, because I have stressed my body over the last 15 weeks. And now it's time to absorb all of that training. And I think my body does definitely need, you know, a bit of a break from, you know, from that high intensity before I start up again. So, uh, but I'm going to finish it out. So I'm going to finish it out. So there's a few more videos left in the Boston Marathon 2024 series that I've been doing. And it's been kind of a wild ride uh, for me, injury-wise anyway. Um, so I am doing some strengthening exercises along with my mobility stuff. It, you know, I talked to him, I talked to my doctor a lot about what I was doing for air quote yoga. <laughs> I always put my yoga in air quotes because it's not typical. In addition to that, you know, he did say that I would be fine to go ahead and start doing some, you know, maybe banded work. So some light um, you know, weight training, so to speak, not not free weights, uh, but to use some bands uh, to start working on my glutes and start uh, strengthening my lower body. So that's what I did today. I've just kind of slowly introduced it here. I did buy some new um, bands and what they call TheraBands, I guess, because I, I busted a lot of my old ones. And they're not ones that I would necessarily recommend. You know, I'm going to use them because I've already bought them. And, you know, I used them already this morning. But um, they're not ones that I would necessarily recommend you out and buy because, you know, they're they're solidly built. That's not the question. You know, this is the, the lightest band, the green band. That's what I use today for the most part. But look at the, the length. And so for me, that's a little bit too long too long uh, to do some of the exercises that I like to do now it works fine for some of them but for the majority of them it's just kind of too long for me and I kind of struggled with that because my you know because I'm do using these on my legs uh, my legs are already this far apart before I start putting any kind of tension uh, on them whether or, you know uh, regardless of the exercise it's having me do but what I did do is um, just as a place to start and I'll hone this down as I go I just used the suggested exercises that came with the bands, right? So I thought, why not? Why not? I don't need to reinvent the wheel. So, um, you know, I did some outer leg lifts, some inner leg lifts, leg curls, uh, leg extension, side steps, and then kickbacks. So those, you know, and again, these all came with, you know, they were instructions that came with the bands that I purchased. But again, it's not ones I would necessarily recommend for, at least they're not 
they're not the best size for me because again, they're just a little bit too long. Uh, to give you an idea, um, when I was doing some of those side steps, I went back to using this one and I lowered it down a bit just to get the kind of workout that I needed. But if I um, can show you just by basis of comparison, because this is the size that I'm used to, I just have busted all the other ones that I have that came with this pack. So I needed to buy new ones, but I didn't really pay pay that close attention as I should. I have to the length of them because this is this is the difference. You can see, you know, that the new bands are quite a bit larger. So it just made it a little bit more awkward because I just wasn't used to working out with bands that size. So, okay, so um, that aside, um, it was really nice. Bella spent the morning with me while I was working out. She's my little workout buddy. I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed her company as well as my other cat, um, Marty, or Kim would say that's her cat, her baby, but um, Marty also spent a little time with me down here this morning as well, and I enjoyed their company. Let's talk about the workout itself that's scheduled for today. Again, we're in the taper, so it's much, much lighter. Uh, but they're still going to have me do some intervals, just not very many of them and not for very long. So I'm going to warm up for 10 minutes and I'm going to go at threshold pace for five minutes and then have uh, one minute to recover. Repeat that twice. So really, we're talking 10 minutes at threshold and then another 10 minutes to cool down. So we're only looking around 32 to 30 what would that be? 32 minutes. 32 minutes, I guess. Um, and the one one thing I would note is in a session like this, that, you know, it's a cool down session, I know it's going to take me a while for my heart rate just to get into that threshold zone. And that's, that's what I'm using, of course, uh, to judge if I'm getting up to the level of intensity that they want me to do. And so of that five minute threshold pace, because I'm only doing two of them, the first one especially, I may not even get up to my heart rate up to 150 beats per minute. And if I do, it'll probably be three minutes in. So that's just kind of a side note that if you're, you know, as we look at my heart rate at the end of the workout, that's what I expect to see. And I almost 100% sure it's not going to say training effect is, um, you know, threshold and probably uh, not even tempo. It would probably just say base. You know, but that's okay because this is the taper week. And uh, so it's week 16 and this is day two of week 16. Yesterday was uh, a rest day. I did do my yoga, but it was also the, my MRI result day. So it was just, I had enough stress, enough things on my plate. It didn't me doing a whole lot more than that. Okay, so um, I'm going to get into my workout. After my workout, I'm going to take a quick shower and then I'm going to jump in my cold tub because uh, that really does help. Um, with especially with pain, you know, it, it, uh, it kind of numbs you all up. You know, and cold is a natural pain reliever, and I just absolutely love it. I just absolutely love that tub. And uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta put together the review here soon <laughs> uh, because I've been using it a long time. But it's, it's just working fantastic. So, okay, now well, let's get into my workout. And I'll take you guys along. You know, it's just, it's so short that I'm probably not going to do a lot of talking in there because there's just not uh, as much time. But we're going to have some fun with it. And I'm really excited to finish this one out, finish out this training block. Um, just really a couple more sessions, and um, and that'll be that. That'll be that'll be the Boston Marathon 2024 um, training for for this year. All right, let's get into this one. So I'm in that 10 minute warm up phase. And then again, I'll do threshold for five minutes, rest for a minute, do another five hole threshold, recover for a minute, and then go to, to my cool down. So pretty low intensity for the most part, especially for an interval session, but that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. So if I were running on Monday, then you know I'd want a chance for my body to recover and absorb and just to be prepared for race day and that's what the taper is all about stay in fit so you don't lose your fitness keep your confidence level high so that when you get there on race day you'll be able to do your best so big believer in the taper <laughs> all right lots to do today after i get done with this uh, like i said i'm going to do the cold tub and then uh, some errands this afternoon. Uh, I've got uh, one of my cats is due for his checkup at the vet. 
he's the one that hates hates to travel so it's gonna be a bit of a trick getting him in the carrier and getting him into the car of course getting him in the carrier at home is really difficult and, but <laughs> vice versa I guess once I get him to the vet I can't get him out because he's scared and then uh, it's no problem at all getting him in the carrier when we're getting ready to leave the vet's office that's for sure because he's ready to come home carrier or not <laughs> Uh, gotta love cats. One minute to recover. Uh, so, uh, it didn't take as long as I thought for my heart rate to get up there, but I also came out of the gate uh, pretty fast. You know, kind of like a bat out of hell there. Um, and when I looked down, my heart rate toward the end was in the 160s, like 161, 160, something like that. So, all right, that was the first five minutes. I'm gonna let you go because I gotta get a drink. And just one more to do. All right, I'll touch base with you here in a second. Whew. 21 minutes in, that second five minute interval is done, and I worked up a sweat. Uh, yeah, in no small part, well, it's just the overall effort, but also it's hot in here right now. My house is like a, you know, it's like a greenhouse when the sun comes out. And so even though the thermostat isn't really on, um, it's still 75, maybe 76 degrees by now in here. So it's hot. Uh, okay. Got a few seconds left in that one minute recovery after that interval. And then it'll be 10 minutes. Easy going. Uh, to finish this workout out. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look at the numbers together here in just a couple minutes. Whew. All right, so I did work up a sweat, as I said, and it is 76 degrees in here. So that certainly played a pretty big role in that. Um, but also those five minute intervals, you know, I was really picking up the pace, probably more so, I know more so than I would had I been doing maybe six, you know, sets of five, that kind of thing. But, uh, but just doing two five minute intervals, yeah, you know, I kind of went for it a little bit. Got my heart rate up there. In fact, my max heart rate was in the uh, mid-160 range at one point when I looked down at my watch. So I know I got it up there in pretty good shape. So it's likely that my training effect will be maybe tempo because I think I got up there pretty good. All right, so overall, just 32 minutes. I went 12.33 miles. 270 was the average power. And 98, 98 was the uh, RPMs or the cadence. So... That was really the big difference. So for my heart rate to be in the, oh, like the 150 range, uh, I needed to be turning my legs over at about 80 to 85 RPMs. But if I wanted to get up into the 160 range, I need to be up, you know, around that, um, you know, 90 RPMs, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. So you can really dial it in on a stationary bike like this in my living room, much more so than I could if I was out on my mountain bike. All right, I have got to go jump in the shower and uh, I'm looking forward to jumping in that cold tub. It's pretty refreshing and the, uh, the endorphins that you get from that, man, that'll carry you through for you know a few hours afterwards. So you, you get a nice spike in energy after being in the cold tub, even for you know three to 10 minutes, something like that. So I do enjoy that part of it. All right, you guys. Hey, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.